Welcome to this course on transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology. In the first lecture, I am going to give a brief introduction about this advanced levels transition metal organometallic course and then subsequently we will take up a very interesting topic which is rapid synthesis uh, mainly from the perspective of utility and challenges of applications of organometallic uh, chemistry in chemical catalysis. Now this particular course this transition metal organometallics in uh, catalysis and biology is a continuation of the past three courses uh, which have been offered in this series of MPTL lecture series. Uh, to start with I had uh, uh, given uh, advanced uh, transition metal organometallic chemistry followed by transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications and then uh, introduction uh, to transition metal organometallic chemistry. Uh, so, these are the three courses uh, which forms the basis and prerequisite for uh, this current course which is transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology and would provide the necessary foundation and platform based on this uh, current course uh, uh, is floated. Now the current course uh, focuses uh, mainly on the application aspects of transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology and the principles and all the rationalizations have been covered in the earlier courses which I just have mentioned uh, so far. Now uh, in the current time organometallics uh, transition metal organometallic uh, compounds or transition metal organometallic chemistry as a field is going through an exciting uh, uh, time given the fact that over the last century about 9 Nobel prizes have been awarded to this field of uh, transition metal uh, organometallic chemistry. Now this uh, is a tremendous uh, achievement for any field or recognition for any field to showcase the potential utility of uh, 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 this uh, in very important set of transition metal organometallic uh, compounds. So, to begin with uh, the first uh, uh, Nobel Prize went to uh, Victor Grignard and Paul Sabatier for Grignard re reagent uh, uh, discovery as early as 1912. Now this uh, if one looks at is a seminal uh, discovery which allowed uh, 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 the chemist to form carbon carbon bonds. Uh, however, uh, there was a, a great bit of challenge associated with it particularly owing to the air and moisture uh, uh, sensitivities uh, of this uh, organo uh, 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 alkaline earth reagent like uh, uh, organo magnesium compounds. And another limitation uh, as we saw for carrying out this uh, CC bond formations in a stoichiometric uh, uh, fashion. The next very important discovery uh, uh, in this area uh, came from uh, this uh, ziegler natta catalyst for the discovery of olefin polymerization. Now this open uh, door to this uh, world of polymers that were synthesized by transition metal organometallic compound and lot of applications of polyolefins uh, uh, emerged out of this discovery. This was indeed a discovery which has uh, 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 broken bounds from the confines of the walls of laboratory to these large scale industries and had a lot of application in the society at large. Another important and seminal uh, discovery was reported by Fisher and Wilkinson uh, which uh, is uh, the hydrogenation reaction followed by Liskom in 1976 got uh, the Nobel Prize for, uh, for structure and bonding elucidation of borane compounds which are very complex in terms of uh, the, norm, uh, the bonds they formed and uh, they are mainly known to form multi-center uh, electron deficient uh, uh, non-classical bonds which are uh, uh, beyond uh, the, uh, uh, the intuition of normal classical two center two electron bonds. So uh, here was a rich world of a bonding uh, complex bonding structures about sharing electrons in a non-classical fashion between multi uh, uh, center uh, for which Lipscomb was uh, rightfully awarded the Nobel Prize. Then in 1979 
we saw H C Brown getting Nobel Prize for uh, developing organoboron reagents uh, and organoboron reagent as we uh, see has lot of uh, uh, applications in the chemistry of reductions particularly borohydrides and other reagents. And we would also see the subsequently uh, 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 another uh, the second Nobel Prize also was an offshoot of uh, the discovery of organoboron reagent particularly that of this palladium mediated cross coupling reaction for uh, uh, which Hex, Suzuki and Negishi was uh, uh, given the Nobel Prize of. So, what we see is that uh, uh, a field not only getting high, uh, Nobel Prize uh, for one time, but uh, in many cases has uh, won a second Nobel Prize for subsequent development of the field as we had seen in uh, with H C Brown uh, organoboron reagent getting Nobel Prize in 1979 as well as uh, uh, in 2010 uh, the utility of organoboron reagent for palladium mediated cross coupling reaction Suzuki and Nagishi uh, also uh, getting the Nobel Prize. Incidentally both uh, Suzuki and Nagishi uh, was a postdoc uh, working for uh, uh, Pro uh, Professor Brown uh, when uh, the excitement of organoboron chemistry was developed. So, what we see that uh, a second generation uh, of Nobel Prize coming from uh, coming to the same uh, junior of uh, chemist uh, who uh, had uh, were the advisor as well as uh, the postdoctoral research associate uh, both ended up getting two different Nobel Prize in a, a time of about uh, 30 years uh, or so apart. Then uh, uh, in 1981 Professor Roald Hoffman uh, was uh, given Nobel Prize again for expl explaining a complex uh, set of uh, rule uh, particularly pertaining to isolability where metal fragments uh, behaved uh, uh, chemically uh, similar or the reactivity uh, of these metal fragments uh, were very similar to that of their organic counterparts. Then in 2001 Noel's Nairi and Sharpless got uh, Nobel Prize for uh, asymmetric hydrogenation reaction. So, again here, here also we see a trend that uh, this is a second Nobel Prize sim, uh, on the similar uh, discovery with the first one being awarded to Fisher and Wilkinson on hydrogenation in 1973 and in 2001 Noel's Nairi and Sharpless getting the second Nobel Prize in asymmetric hydrogenation in more refined uh, uh, techniques for hydrogenation uh, after another to, uh, 30 years or so. Uh, again in 2005 uh, another important uh, uh, discovery in the area of organometallic chemistry namely this uh, metathesis reaction uh, was recognized and given Nobel Prize to Professor Richard Strock, uh, Robert Grouse and Professor Chauvin. And this also uh, is uh, in that way one can say a second Nobel Prize uh, to organometallic polymerization field the first being that of Carl Ziegler and Giulio Nata uh, in 1963 given for polyolefin polymerization and again uh, after a span of about 40 years Strzok, Grubb and Chauvin uh, getting uh, 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 Nobel Prize uh, for uh, another uh, discovery in the area of olefin polymerization particularly from the metathesis standpoint. So, uh, what uh, I, I uh, intend to highlight uh, through all these uh, discoveries and this uh, correlation is the fact that applications of transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology uh, have tremendous potential which uh, are now being realized uh, 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 and also been recognized by the fact that so many Nobel prizes have been awarded to this particular field in uh, uh, the last 100 years or so. Another thing that I should uh, stress uh, about this course is uh, that this course not only focuses on the applications of transition metal organometallics in catalysis, but also in biology particularly from the perspective of bio organometallic chemistry. Now, if I may uh, uh, point uh, out uh, to all these 9 Nobel pri uh, prizes that have been uh, awarded. Now, all can see that almost all of them have been awarded to the field of catalysis. And, uh, 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 and the area of organ, organ transition metal organometallics in biology 
a, a still remains a, a stage in development and has uh, uh, um, uh, yet uh, to be recognized as a potential area of uh, importance. So, uh, this fo course also uh, focuses uh, on this particular aspect where uh, one can see that how uh, transition metal organometallics uh, are becoming a very important in the area of biology particularly in bio uh, organometallic chemistry and uh, uh, the, uh, the course also is focused in this end. Now uh, before uh, uh, we just uh, go in let me recall some of the concepts uh, uh, that we had uh, uh, discussed in the earlier courses as these uh, would be very much uh, uh, essential uh, in appreciating and understanding the content uh, which would be a, a given uh, in these next few uh, lectures. Now to begin with uh, we had uh, looked at various kinds of ligand systems uh, which stabilize transition metal organometallic compounds particularly from their bonding perspective and they include sigma as well as pi donor ligands, uh, 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 pi acceptor ligands. Now these in the previous courses we have looked uh, into the various uh, orbitals are, uh, in, that are involved in uh, engaging in bonding uh, with uh, uh, metal. Now one interesting concept uh, about uh, transition metal organometallics is that a transition metal ligand bond is a two way traffic. That means that uh, the transition metal accepts electron uh, uh, a sigma electron from the uh, ligand which is uh, electron uh, rich entity and also uh, uh, provides a second uh, kind of interaction which is donation of uh, uh, electron back from the metal uh, uh, to the ligand. So, uh, 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 these is a unique property of transition metal ligand interaction where a two way trans, uh, uh, traffic of electron flow is observed. The first one um, uh, is uh, uh, the uh, sigma interaction where the, uh, the ligand gives uh, electron to the metal and the second one uh, is uh, the pi interaction where the metal uh, gives uh, 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 electron back to the ligand. So uh, this there is an interplay and there is a balance between the type of flow uh, that exists between transition ligand bonding and we had observed this uh, phenomenon uh, to be present in various kinds of ligand starting with uh, the C3 fragments uh, which are uh, C3, R3 plus uh, and then uh, we have looked into uh, the higher uh, uh, homologues of this ligand uh, like cyclobutane C4 H4 or the more common variant C5 H5 uh, uh, and looked into uh, the uh, preparation properties of this uh, kind of ligand uh, which uh, are by nature sigma donating, pi donating or pi accepting ligands and uh, we have also looked into heteroleptic complexes. where this uh, transition metal is bound to various kinds of uh, different ligands and that uh, are uh, like cyclopentadienyl, carbonyl, uh, nitrosyl, hydride and the halide complexes of transition metals. So in most of these cases the important take home message is the dual or uh, two way interaction of metal ligand uh, 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 with respect to the electron flow is evident and important and also they play a crucial uh, role uh, in uh, being able to uh, uh, stabilize uh, the particular kind of interaction. The past uh, we had seen that uh, uh, one has we had looked into uh, the three fragment interaction uh, with the metal, the four fragment interaction with the metal, the five fragment interaction with the metal. Uh, then uh, the six fragment interaction with the metal, uh, even the seven fragment interaction uh, with the metal and 
uh, lastly a, a the uh, eight fragment interaction with metal. So, there is a, a wide diversity of range of uh, interaction which is possible uh, between the metal and ligand and in uh, the previous course uh, we have looked into the type of uh, metal ligand interaction uh, uh, which uh, are possible and the, con uh, the constant uh, thing is that in all of these there is a metal uh, ligand interaction uh, where there is a sigma bond uh, between the metal and the ligand and there is a back donation. Uh, which happens from the metal to the ligand. So, this is uh, a, a, a unique feature uh, of uh, organometallic compounds and that is present in various kind of interactions uh, that we have discussed uh, uh, in the uh, previous course. And uh, as we moved on uh, from uh, C6 fragment uh, uh, to the uh, cycloheptyl uh, trinyl C7H7 and C888 fragments looked at the interactions. Uh, then in the past, uh, the previous uh, class we have also looked at various applications of uh, these transition metal organometallic uh, compounds particularly from CC cross coupling reactions. As I said that this is a, a very interesting uh, area which has recently been awarded the Nobel Prize uh, uh, where uh, this uh, the CC coupling. Uh, has been recognized an important synthetic tool for constructing uh, various kind of uh, um, uh, organic targets uh, uh, and this is effortlessly done using palladium, hex, suzuki uh, and steely coupling and other uh, sets of uh, palladium mediated cross coupling reaction. Now, uh, as I said that many uh, when I was highlighting talking about the importance of organometallic chemistry as a field as I said that in several instances we had observed uh, that uh, the f uh, particular discovery a uh, being uh, uh, recognized with Nobel Prize not only once but even more than once and to that we had seen the examples of olefin polymerization as well as metathesis polymerization uh, both uh, are transition metal mediated polymerization being recognized as an important uh, discovery and being awarded uh, Nobel Prize twice. We have also seen uh, like hydrogenation by Wilkinson as well as Nairi's asymmetric hydrogenation getting uh, uh, this Nobel Prize twice. Uh, and similarly on the same flow what we saw is this uh, CC bond forming reaction by Grignard uh, 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 given Nobel Prize in 1912. Again uh, uh, about 100 years later in 2010 uh, uh, again the CC uh, bond forming reaction particularly the cross coupling reaction uh, winning Nobel Prize. Uh, as uh, given to Hex Suzuki coupling. So, this uh, shows that a uh, field even uh, uh, could achieve uh, significant milestones in terms of dis uh, discovery even about a, a century uh, apart uh, uh, since the uh, first major uh, uh, discovery organized by Nobel Prize was. So, Grignard won in 1912 and then again uh, Suzuki uh, uh, coupling. Uh, so, still winning in 2010. Another important thing on this that this uh, cross coupling uh, which was given Nobel Prize in 2010 uh, is mainly for several uh, improvements uh, on with regard to CC cross coupling which this uh, Nobel uh, 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 discovery uh, uh, brought in. Uh, for example, the Grignard uh, uh, reactions are extremely air and moisture sensitive whereas uh, uh, the current uh, Nobel Prize winning cross coupling reactions are uh, stable uh, 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 in air and these reactions can be performed in open air under aerobic conditions. So, there has been uh, a lot of grounds which have been covered in terms of uh, improvements uh, and discovery. Furthermore, uh, another important uh, uh, benefit of this more revised uh, way of CC cross coupling reaction is the fact that these reactions are carried out uh, in uh, with the metal reagent being used in catalytic amounts where hard large number of turnovers are observed by uh, at the same catalyst whereas uh, the Grignard discovery had mainly been 
uh, uh, stoichiometric uh, with respect to the uh, very sensitive uh, Grignard uh, reagents which were used for making this carbon carbon bonds and hence again uh, thing is that a lot of grounds have been covered in terms of uh, the discovery, in terms of uh, uh, overcoming the challenges and it is uh, 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 becoming more and more evident that uh, the field is really very important as many of the discoveries or many of the areas of the uh, discoveries have been awarded uh, the Nobel Prize not only once but more than once over a span of as little as 30 years to as high as about 80 or 90 or 100 years uh, uh, to say that uh, this field of or organometallic chemistry is really pa passing through an exciting uh, time uh, and uh, it is alive and kicking. So, uh, uh, we had uh, along the same flow, we had uh, looked into some applications earlier on in our previous courses uh, that involved cross coupling reaction, Sonogashira uh, uh, coupling, uh, hydrocyanation reactions, uh, carbon heteroatom coupling, hydroamination reaction. Now, uh, th some of these are really uh, very interesting uh, problems, uh, uh, even industrially uh, uh, from a society point of view given the fact uh, that uh, they pose a lot of uh, challenges when uh, wants to achieve and one such thing is hydroamination reaction. Hydroamination reactions are, are reactions uh, which uh, uh, are very uh, clean in the sense that they are atom economic uh, which means that there is no side product which is uh, or byproducts which are to be pro, uh, produced in the course of the reaction uh, mm, uh, uh, which needs to be uh, uh, discarded. So, these are uh, highly desirable atom, atom economic reaction in the sense that all the reactants uh, uh, get incorporated into the product and there is nothing uh, uh, to discard of. But the major challenge in hydroamination reactions are uh, that uh, both uh, making the two reactant uh, uh, to react uh, because the amines and the substrates, uh, unsaturated substrates uh, like olefins, alkynes, all are electron rich entities and they mutually repel each other and they uh, would not participate in uh, reaction with each other. And here what we observe is that uh, uh, the solution has been provided uh, by transition metal uh, uh, chemistry where uh, uh, the transition metal binds to this electron rich species uh, activates them that is make them more uh, electron deficient as a result of binding to transition metal through the metal ligand forward uh, uh, sigma donation and backward pi donation uh, the uh, type of donation we have just uh, discussed about in the earlier slide uh, making one of the reactant uh, 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 more agreeable to reacting with the other reactant and hence uh, we see how this uh, academic challenge of making two uh, electron rich uh, substrates react uh, becomes possible as a uh, result of intervention of uh, transition metals in transition metal organometallic chemistry. Along the same line we have looked into some other very useful uh, applications of transition metal uh, organometallic chemistry particularly carbon heteroatom coupling, hydroboration reactions, hydrocylylation reactions, olefin oxidation reactions. Uh, now, we have also looked at some of the very important industrial processes like water gap shift reaction, fissure trop synthesis, carbonylation of alcohols. Uh, uh, we have also uh, in the same breath, uh, we have also looked into these hydrogenation reactions, uh, their asymmetric form. Uh, as a part of uh, the, uh, the previous uh, course uh, where we discussed some of the applications of transition metal uh, organometallic chemistry in the world of chemical catalysis. Now, uh, now today uh, 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 given the fact that uh, I have just uh, provided a glimpse of uh, the extent uh, and the utility uh, to which uh, the transition metal uh, organometallic chemistry in the world of catalysis can uh, expand to uh, and also uh, being recognized with Nobel prizes. Uh, today uh, 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 in this course I am going to take up another very important uh, uh, applications of transition metal uh, 
uh, chemistry, particularly uh, uh, in the area of rapey uh, synthesis, which is nothing but the utility of acetylenes uh, in industrial processes. Now, uh, here I should mention that uh, this uh, development of transition metal organometallic chemistry uh, uh, is uh, mm, kind of unique where we see the, uh, the development being carried out equally uh, uh, in industry as well as uh, uh, in the uh, laboratory of academia. Uh, so, uh, mm, uh, the topic, the first topic in this course is rapid synthesis which has been exclusively or extensively developed uh, in industry uh, uh, where uh, and has been done about a century ago by uh, 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 Walter Rippey uh, who was a pioneer uh, in acetylene chemistry. Now, uh, we are going to uh, be uh, uh, looking up uh, in this uh, rich applications of acetylene chemistry as developed by Walter Rippey uh, 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 and uh, which are popularly known as this Rippey synthesis uh, in the uh, subsequent lecture uh, from now on. I should also uh, mention uh, that uh, mm, uh, the most of the applications uh, uh, of uh, transition metal organometallics has been by and large in the area of chemical catalysis homogeneous as well as heterogeneous. However, uh, uh, the applications of transition metal uh, organometallics in biology is still an emerging and the new area uh, which is gaining importance by the day. Uh, with that, uh, I would want to emphasize that this uh, course we are going to take up topics not only uh, for the utility of transition metal organometallics in cat catalysis, but also uh, in uh, biology. So, with this I conclude uh, today's lecture where I had given a brief introduction about the potential importance and utility of transition metal organometallics in catalysis and I have made grounds for their uh, utility in biology and uh, also introduced uh, an important uh, reaction that I would be talking about which is rapid synthesis which has been uh, developed uh, mainly uh, in the industry uh, and had been a contribution from the industry in Germany. Uh, and more uh, of this in today's lecture, we are going to take up uh, these rapid synthesis, rapid chemistry in more uh, details in subsequent lecture. Till that, uh, uh, goodbye and look forward to being with you in the next lecture. Thank you.